Hey, this week on Focus on Photography, my man Wools and I sit down with the amazing Karen Hutton, and we're going to get our woo on, folks. Check it out. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Focus on Photography, Episode 8, recorded Thursday, December 19th, 2019. The story of the Wu. This episode of Focus on Photography is brought to you by Masterclass, online classes taught by the world's greatest minds. For a limited time, when you buy one annual Masterclass All Access Pass for yourself, you get another one to gift for free. Go to masterclass.com slash focus to get started with this limited time offer. Hey folks, I am Ant Pruitt. This is Focus on Photography here on twit.tv. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed again on this fine Thursday morning. I got my partner here, Mr. Michael Woolsey Wools. My man, how you doing? I'm doing so well. It feels good to be here for sure. I'm glad to see you here every week like we normally do, except for that time you ditched me for a client. Oh, I'm, I'm still not going to bring sorry. that up. I, I said I wasn't going to bring that up again. My uh, bad. No, that's all right. Um, but yeah, this week we have another amazing guest. And excuse me while I catch my breath. <sighs> Miss, <laughs> Miss Karen Hutton <laughs> is joining us this week on the show, my man. Hey, Miss Karen, how you doing? Hey, guys, I'm doing great. How about you? Oh, very good. Oh, my gosh. It's the voice, the photographer. The voice. Karen well, look who's talking. Hutton. Mr. <laughs> voice himself. I know, right? <laughs> I wish that was the case. I wish that I love. I love how he says, oh, there it is, the voice. And I'm like, have you heard yourself lately? <laughs> See, she's going to really make my head bigger today. Ah, we see, we really don't need that on this show. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, folks, thanks, thanks to all of you all for uh, hopping in and joining us today. Uh, this is Focus on Photography. This is the roundtable discussion photography podcast where we sit down and just go through a couple photography-related news, photography-related rumors, and then we just start chit-chatting about day-to-day -day life as a working creative artist, whether it's a photographer, videographer, uh, designer, what have you. We just like to sit down and chat. We're not going to sit here and interview our esteemed guests. I am going to pick a brain, but we do just like to have a chat and share the experiences so the people that are listening to this and are aspiring to be creative artists can maybe take something from it and apply it to their day-to-day -day and help you know, take themselves to the next level. I agree. Will. And Isn't it how the, the famous guru people say it to the next level, right? Open your eyes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember Kawato in that movie, Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yes. Oh. Open, open your mind. Open your mind. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Let's go ahead and get started with today's uh, bit of news and rumors. Uh, over on fstoppers.com, uh, Adobe, uh, well, they reported that Adobe is posting some huge success, $11 billion in revenue um, this year from their services. And that got my attention because there's, if you go to our Twit online forums, twit.community, there's a gazillion people in there yelling about, I don't want to pay the Adobe subscription fee monthly fee, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to do that. That's just crazy. I want the software. And, and Adobe's like, yeah, have at it. <laughs> <laughs> like, just yeah. have at it. Um, but yeah, they posted $11 billion in revenue and the subscription model is doubling its profit in just three daggum years. Yeah, well, good for them though. Man, I could, I could remember, um, I went to Adobe Max, I think it was maybe 2016, 2015, and we had the whole press event with the executive team there. And one of the people in, in, the, in the staff, in the uh, press room was saying, you know, hey, people are still pretty pissed off that you guys are just forcing us to do this subscription thing. And the CEO, Mr. Shatanu Narayan, he looked dead at the dude and said, yeah, and we're not stopping it. We're not changing it. This is what it's going to be. Next question. <laughs> yeah, I got to <laughs> you tell know? you. Yeah, he, he didn't hold anything back. He, he wasn't apologetic about it. It's just, hey, this is our business model. Take it 
or leave it. And yeah. I was like, I respect that. Yeah, but I remember the old way I, and where you had to load things up. And then it just, mm-hmm. but this I feel is so friendly, user friendly. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to worry about the updates. The updates come in when, yeah, when they come when in. There. And, yeah. And I think it's a great service. I really do. And um, good for them to uh, finding that model. What, and, are you, what are your thoughts on this, Miss Karen? I, I know you've used a couple of different packages because I've watched you over the years. You've used, uh, I remember using On One a lot of times for your HDR. I did stuff. in the past. Mm-hmm. I, I do. I have a different workflow now, but I'm a Photoshop girl. I, I don't use Lightroom. I use Photoshop and then and plugins and I use Bridge and I wish Bridge ran a hell of a lot better than it does. Oh. I think it I'm seems the only to be. person that doesn't use Bridge because it just sort of got it. Well, you way. use Lightroom, right? Mm-hmm. See, yeah. So it's either the game is either Bridge or Lightroom. So since I'm, I really don't use Lightroom for anything, I have to use Bridge. And I'm just having issues with it, and I go on forums, and everyone's having issues. Everybody's with it. having issues. Yeah. I, yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm on you know same side as Michael, where I'm like, you know what? More power to you. I'm glad you have a successful business because making money makes them stay in business, and mm-hmm. that's great. But I really wish they'd fix some stuff <laughs> so it actually ran, you know, so that we don't mind paying the subscription. Well, we can say this. Um, Lightroom was the bane of existence for a lot of people because it was just stupid slow Uh, Mm -hmm. just just stupid slow for no reason at all and you could go in and try to optimize it with um, different settings and whatnot but it was still just too slow Mm -hmm. I can remember I had a had a gig to do and I wanted to tether for that gig and I didn't have capture one at the time but Lightroom had its tether feature in it and it just killed me It, 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 it was the total waste of time I was able to work through the job without it, but just, oh, I could see all of the hate that people had been talking about. Now it's a lot faster than what it was. And the tether feature, I've used it here on the other show, hands-on photography, a couple of times, and it's worked just fine. Yeah, there was some kinks in there for sure. Oh, it was bad. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was so bad. But Capture One is still nice, too. I I like Capture One. But look how much products they have. I mean, to try to keep on top of everything. I mean, it's right. a hard so, thing so to do. So maybe one day they'll get to bridge and speed it up <laughs> and make it more efficient for Miss Karen. I mean. Or, you know, they can have all the easy to find instructions for if it bogs down and makes your computer run at 1500% CPU, <laughs> here's what to do. Oh. <laughs> Gosh. Okay. Oh yeah. So anyway, I know it doesn't it doesn't run like that if you have smaller images, but I'm a power user. What you can are. I say? And right. the detail mm-hmm. in your work is I, I can see where that power comes into. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So so anyway, that's my, my only beef. I mean, I don't have I don't hold their success against them because that keeps them in business mm-hmm. and that's great. But I I do feel that if you're gonna charge us monthly, you should probably update monthly. <laughs> Just now, saying. Now, do you use any other any other tools out there? I know you said you mentioned some plugins, but have you ever taken a look I, at stuff like Affinity or things like that? Well, that's that's upcoming. I'm going to dig into that and see what that's all about for sure. I use Procreate on the iPad. I use um, Exposure 5, which used to be Alien Skin. And now mm-hmm. they've uh, rebranded to Exposure. I use, I use Nick Software. I use Skyloom. Um, oh, yeah. You know, it depends on what I'm doing. And each one has, they all have these special things they do particularly well. I agree. And, and that they have their own way of doing a thing that I just love. So I'm, I'm kind of, I always call myself the Cuisinart of post-processing <laughs> tools. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I've yeah. been there. And, and I can remember back in the days when I had my smartphone photographers community, uh, I would, my workflow was a little janky if you will, it was sort of all over the place. Mm-hmm. But just like Miss Karen said, the different tools had different benefits. Yeah. And right. Just, you know. And I remember the Nick collection um, after Google got a hold of them. And I think I used out of that group the uh, sharpening tool. I think it's called Define. Yeah. Oh, no, Define one. is, Define is. Um, wait a minute, am I wrong about that? Define, I think, is uh, noise reduction. But they do have a sharpen. But it was a sharpen tool, tool in there yeah. that was just just light years better hmm. than what Lightroom was offering at the time. So I think, yeah, and I think I still think Nick's. I love their. Um, it's one of the contra- uh, um, dynamic. What is it? Contrast is that what it's called? <laughs> Pro contrast, but the dynamic contrast, and they're in other words, they handle contrast better than almost right. anybody. Um, but it's sort of like you know, I grew up. You know, my sister was an artist, and I grew up 
watching her, you know, in the same painting, grab this brush, that brush, grab a sponge, grab a rag, mm -hmm. do a finger, you know what I mean? So no one uh, plug-in or app or anything is going to have everything or have it the way you want to use it. Right. So that's the genius of having all these options. And I don't use everything in every single one, but the, the, uh, the blend of them gives them, gives me anyway, the dimension and the, you know, layering and the, mm -hmm. the feeling of going into my images better than just doing it in one app. Right. About like Wolves has said previously on the show, you know, you got a bunch of tools, just use the tools, period. Yeah. Right. It doesn't, doesn't matter what the name of the app is. It's just a tool. Right. And yeah. actually I, I totally agree though with, um, Adobe though it's it's nice to go from Lightroom to uh, Photoshop in one uh, click and uh, mm. that to me is just a really wonderful um, uh, advantage to working with um, this uh, program. Dynamic link that's how yeah. they get me. <laughs> it's actually really quite brilliant. <laughs> Dynamic link. That's um but yeah I wanted to share that because it, it's I know that's been a, a a big sort of a nitpick for a lot of people out there in the community. Yeah, I saw the comments. And it's like, man. <laughs> <laughs> Even people in the chat room I know, are saying, it's exploding. Yeah, they're, they're not so happy about it, but it is what it is. So yeah. good on you, Adobe. Good on you, Adobe. All right, next up, uh, DIY photography blog. And Miss Karen, I'm glad you're here this week as this, this news just come out, uh, uh, you know, about a, three, four days ago. Because I believe I've seen you have been to Antelope Canyon. Mm, such a beautiful mm -hmm. place. And, well, supposedly they're ending the photo tours of Antelope Canyon. Now, I've never been able to attend anything like that, especially, you know, I'm coming from the East Coast and finally getting over here on the West Coast. So I've never had the access um, to get over here and shoot something like this. But when I read into it, the photo tours were a bit problematic for people that wasn't in the photography world mm. you know it was sort of a like a, a pain because you get all the photographers lined up and a tour guide would throw dust and things like that and just to try to help the photographer uh. get these shots mm -hmm. if you will to make the mood and i respect that i guess that's someone that that you know appreciates the craft of photography but all of those other paying tourists behind you that don't shoot right. are being held up because people like me are standing around with tripods and things like that in the way uh, I, I, I get it, but I, it, I guess it's a little bit sad. You have any thoughts on this? Wolves? Well, I, I think I you ever from, been there. I had not, I've been to the mo, mo of that area, but not never to Antelope Park mm -hmm. uh, or Canyon. And I have to say, I uh, absolutely love the work that has come out of there in regards to Ansel Adams, Edward Weston. Right. And, um, and actually, um, Galen Rowan, you know, um, Ro Gal Galen Rowell. Rowell, yeah. I mm -hmm. keep forgetting his uh, last name. But who have created such beautiful images from there. And I think um, I, I, when something gets that popular, it starts ruining the, um, the kind of the essence of the place. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't, it's not as um, high s sacred. And um, I, I have a, uh, yeah, so I'm of two minds, but I feel mm -hmm. that um, I think it's okay to let the, the tours go. Yeah, let the tours go. Yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Miss Karen? What's been your experience over there? Over there? Um, well, it was great. I'm really glad I went. I don't think I would go back again. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, it's one of those experiences. I, um, I did. Well, so to answer your question, I understand the dilemma and it's very challenging. And of course, we don't have boots on the ground day to day to know what the actual experience mm -hmm. of dealing with all these photographers was. My guess is it wasn't that pleasant. Right. And um, that they probably, you know, just on a day to day basis, didn't feel the love, shall we say. Mm -hmm. um, and I would shut them down too if they yeah. did that to me. But uh, but anytime you have just hordes and hordes of people, it's, it's never pleasant. There's group mind and all that kind of thing. So, you know, and the truth of the matter is, do you really need to go and photograph and copy some, what somebody else did? Do you right. really? Mm. So, so go, very go yeah. have your own. I mean, I, uh, that I'm of two minds there too. I should go, mm, I'm like, yes, I do feel that way. I do feel that 
a lot of times people just go and, you know, there's this spray painted yellow feet on the ground. People stand there and take their picture. And I'm like, good for you. Right. And that's great. And, and at a certain point in your, in your growth and development, that's important to see if you can get the chops to do that. Do you need to practice in Antelope Canyon? I don't know. When it gets so overpopulated, go find your own slot canyons. Right. I did that this past, um, you know, summer in Utah, um, hired somebody to take me into some slot canyons that only he knew about. Mm -hmm. Right. right. And not everybody can do that, but, but there are ways to do your work and do your search and find some that are less populated because at a certain point, it's like everything. It's Mm -hmm. like life, you know, at a certain point, the pendulum swings the other way. Mm -hmm. And one thing I've learned is like, I hate it when it happens, but it happens. So move on and find your own original thought. And go be an artist mm. for yourself, not just – now, I sound like I'm being really harsh, and I don't mean to be, but – at all. But I do think that um, – We don't mind harsh on this show. Well, so <laughs> thing, the me. thing about Antelope Canyon is it's great, but there are a lot of other places to go. And and I I have a little – I'm a little bit – I try not to talk negatively about things, but this whole, you know, geo – tourism mm. let's just kill all these places have you seen the lineups going up to you know right. everest on right. tibet all oh, right okay. what what the hell yeah. people <laughs> go, yeah, go somewhere else have an original thought mm-hmm. you know go, so go I'm, in your backyard you know, uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah. share an experience with you all and this goes back to the actual travel of driving across the country to get here back in late august And as we got closer to California, I decided, you know what? We can just take a little short detour and go to the Grand Canyon. I've Mm -hmm. never been to the Grand Canyon. I want to see the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. Took a detour, got there. Bit of a surprise to the family because they didn't know what I was doing. They're just following the big truck. And and we pull up to this big park and they're like, wow, we're going to the Grand Canyon. And of course, I grabbed my cameras. And as I got to the little ledge to look out or what have you, I was struggling with my camera. I'm, I knew I wanted to take a picture because I wanted to have that just for me, mm-hmm. you know. But at the same time, I was when I was framing things up, I'm thinking, everybody has shot this. Mm. What can you do differently? Mm-hmm. And it was a struggle. Yeah. You know, it's like, a... what, what can I do differently? And then I was like, nope, just enjoy the freaking moment. Exactly. exactly. And I ended up just snapping a yeah. couple random things, and I did my Clemson flag because that's just something that, yeah, some people do were weird like that, and then um, I put the camera away. I think that's I think that's smart. <laughs> you know, and I and I look at stuff like this Antelope Canyon. I've been interested in that. Would love to see that that light come through, but at the same time, I probably would have shot a shot that looks like somebody else's and wouldn't have differentiated, mm-hmm. and it really really wouldn't have done much of anything for me other than just the experience. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, I wonder how. Um, so when people do photograph and they feel like they need to photograph something, how, how, are they really getting an impression of what is being in front of them? And it's uh, it's very interesting that mm. where people take out their cell phones and need to click without actually taking in what I feel like what you do, Karen, is to bring in the whole the whole of what you're um, photographing. Mm. Um, I, I don't know if that's. Well, I mean, there's, you know, there's all kinds of ways of taking photos. You know, it isn't like what I do. I'm not expecting, nobody should expect that, you know, Bob over here standing to my left or Sue over here standing to my right are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, I use my phone too, Mm -hmm. but I use, but I use it in different ways than I use my camera. I can't do with my phone what I do with my camera, but at the same time I apply showing up, being present and seeing something that makes me go, oh, you know, fills me with awe. I still use that with, with my phone. It's just not always practical to have my camera. And sometimes I use my phone to scout because, you know, Aunt, you live closer to the Grand Canyon now. It's not out of reach right. to have done your recce and seen what it is and go, oh, I see what it's all about. Well, right. where does that sit in me? What do mm-hmm. I want to create around that? And then make a trip. Right. You can mm-hmm. do that now. Right. So, so you know, nothing's lost by you know, using your phone just to kind of see, just to try it out, you know? Right. Yeah. I, I do want to add one more thing. Um, 
because you made me think of it. A lot of people, like in big cities, when I lived in Charlotte, everybody wanted to shoot the Charlotte skyline because mm. it's pretty. Mm -hmm. It's small, but it's pretty. And I tried to help some people there in the community that wanted to go out on photo walks or whatever and, and told them, okay, I know you want that money shot, quote unquote, of the skyline. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee if we walked over here to the park or the side street, you're probably going to get a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And at least that's what helped me. And they, tend, they, they seem to enjoy going out and just checking out the other stuff. Just go off of the beaten path. Just just one block. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not yeah. that far. <laughs> you know, you I a lot of times will shoot, you know, I'll shoot the obvious shot just to get it out of my head. Right. You know, it's like, OK, let's just get that. OK, that's done now. Now that I've done that, right. got that. <laughs> now let's go over here and do this. Now let's go over here and do that. And that is also coupled with the idea of when you go to a, a big place, you know, where it's got like a, what do you call it? The money shot. Right. Um, get your money shots. Get right. them all. Don't right. leave any. Don't leave any pixels behind. And right. then go get your fine art shots or your impression shots or your personal shots or whatever. And walk away with a book. Mm. Right. Of mm -hmm. all your ideas and all your thoughts and your entire experience, there's there's no limit. <laughs> something right. is, something is in your own voice, if you will. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you know, the the more you judge it and go, I shouldn't do the money shot. Well, get it. It'll only take you ten seconds. Right. Do it. It's just pixels. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just pixels. get it, get her done, yeah. and have it, and then you can say there it is, and then you can do other things. Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. All right. Well, that I. That was fascinating just to, to read that. And, and I, I didn't have any idea that all of that stuff was going on behind the scenes. But yeah. hey, what do I know? What do so I know? much is going on. Um, all right. So we're going to transition now and just take a quick break. Um, and after the break, we're going to start digging into Miss Karen Hutton. Speaking of finding your voice. Until I talked about this. But we'll go ahead and thank our sponsor this week. This episode of Focus on Photography is brought to you by Masterclass. Masterclass lets you learn from the best with exclusive access to online classes taught by masters of their craft with over 70 different instructors across many categories, folks. As a photographer, yes, I will sit down every single day and try to learn something extra to help boost my skill set. I don't care if it's just picking up my smartphone and clicking this cup of coffee. I'm trying to boost my skill set. And Masterclass is giving me yet another resource to be able to boost my photography skill set. You can learn things such as game design and theory from Will Wright, the art of storytelling from Neil Gaiman, or filmmaking with Werner Herzog, Jodie Foster, or Spike Lee. The lessons range from specifically showing you how to execute a technique to a master's insight about their craft that can be translated across many different fields and disciplines. There's always something more to learn that will help expand your horizons. So what exactly is Masterclass? All right. It's an immersive learning experience accessible on your phone, web, or Apple TV. It offers classes on a wide variety of topics, all taught by world-class masters at the top of their field. Each class is broken down into individual lessons and downloadable materials, all of which users can explore at their own pace. So it's, it's self-directed. You're not really locked in. You can schedule it out on the time that works for you. I love that. The All Access Pass membership charge annually gives users unlimited access to over 70 classes and 200 hours of lessons taught by the world's best. Now, for me, I've been digging into Miss Annie Leibovitz's photography class, mm -hmm. and I've also looked at uh, Mr. Scorsese's oh, there you go. film instruction. Nice. Um, and it's been fascinating to watch it because I, I believe I said before, think of it as a sitting in on a college lecture and then think about it as a documentary, sort of all wrapped up into one. And then you get these downloadable files of assignments of things that you can try and they're looking at you and challenging you to, hey, this is what you can do to get better. Think about this process. Think about this theory. And the insight that they give being masters just, oh, it's mm -hmm. so fascinating. Um, Scorsese talked a lot about going to, to the film or cinema back when he was younger and learning something when he, when he left out of there, when the intent was to go there to be entertained. Right. <laughs> But he comes out of there thinking, wow, I just learned something mm -hmm. just about 
the vision of how somebody else sees something. Right. You know, it, it's, 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 it's a beautiful curriculum if you can get on in there and check that stuff out. And, and it's shot pretty well. Yes, it is. It's a very nice, it's uh, nicely done. Beautiful. So Masterclasses All Access Pass makes a great holiday gift, and it's an easy way to give a gift that's personal and meaningful. So for a limited time, when you buy one annual Masterclass All Access Pass for yourself, you get another one to gift for free. Ooh. Go to masterclass.com slash focus to get started with this limited time offer. Buy one All Access Pass and get one free to gift at masterclass.com slash focus. And we thank Masterclass for their support of Focus on Photography. They're awesome. They are. Those courses. Oh, my God. Um, one, that's another. It's on my list, too. Uh, <laughs> nice. Learn some stuff. Oh, my gosh. Just even watching the trailers is like, oh, my God. Oh, oh that's it's really so shot. funny. I, I, oh, I, I know. like the trailer that the first trailer that popped up for me was Samuel L. Jackson's. Uh-huh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> he was so funny and so deliberate, but I ended up clicking on it and, and I've watched two of his lessons. Mm. And again, what did he do? Is he doing acting? Acting. Mm-hmm. And, and I believe the second course talked about character development oh. and the research that goes into understanding your character when mm-hmm. you get on that screen. And it's a whole different mindset that I had no, <laughs> no idea about. I love how they're going behind the scenes on this. I that love it. so nice. Good stuff. And that's a perfect thing for Christmas time too. If you yep. buy something for yourself, you could give it to, well, my son. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. For the free uh, edition. I love those kind of gifts. I got it for myself, and then I gave it to someone. <laughs> nice. So you're like, so you're like doubly awesome, right? Just, uh-huh. uh, yeah, it works. It just works. <laughs> Definitely. Now, Miss Karen Hutton. Okay. Yes. So let me t- let me just speak from the heart, far as what I know and what I've learned about you. I came across Miss Karen Hutton several years ago, um, watching YouTube, and she was online with Trey Ratcliffe, and it was the, uh, the, the, now I can't remember what the name of his show was, but you were on there just about every time that he recorded. And I remember every time you popped up, it was a ball of energy, just, just ball of energy. Cause you talked to Trey Ratcliffe, who I love. Uh, he's so Zen and calm. And then the camera switched over to Miss Hutton and it was just boom, just ball, <laughs> this ball of energy. The yin and yang. Yeah. You know, it, it was it was it was so fascinating to watch her. And then I later learned about Miss Karen doing voiceover work. Oh wow. And, and and it just hooked me because she's she's so creative on many fronts. And the best thing, you know, and she says it best on her on her website, purveyor awesomeness <laughs> purveyor of awesomeness now miss karen that that takes some gumption for anybody to put that up and describe as themselves now yeah i know you have gumption but look, look, tell us a little bit more about being the purveyor purveyor of awesomeness i didn't i never said the the is not in the title ah. it is just purveyor it's what i do i'm not saying i'm the one who's so awesome every day but i I (laughs) well that's up to you but my position behind it is that you know i mean well five thoughts just hit me all at once Mm. so my position behind it is that i want that everything i do everything i say everything i create is awesome from my own perspective Mm. i want to live an awesome life. I don't want to talk smack. I don't want to, although I do Mm -hmm. sometimes. And I'm like, and then later I'm like, why did you do that? I don't like that. I like to be a stand for light, for life, for energy, Mm. for things that matter for, you know, in a, in a sort of a soulful way. This is a spiritual journey for me. This whole life Mm -hmm. is. So why not purvey that? Why not, you know, all a purveyor is doing is going around and handpicking their favorite stuff. Right. That's how I want to live my life. I mm. want to handpick my favorite stuff. That's why I'm sitting here at the holiday season at the end of every year. I always assess the year that I just had and I go, how awesome was it? You know, how much mm. did you love it? What do you want to continue to do? What fills your heart with joy? And, you know, is is somehow that combination of joy and financial reward and soulful reward and giving back and everything? And how can we do that in an even more awesome way? So I purvey my own life mm-hmm. that way. 
so I thought, well, when I, when I first thought of it, I actually came up with it um, with a friend of mine and he said, do it. And I'm like, that's really audacious. But I was mm-hmm. like, you know, what? it's audacious to be born, uh, you know? Uh, okay. And so I'm like, whatever, after that, it's just call it what it is. And, I, and then that purveying is what I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, what I'm committed to in my own life. Mm-hmm. And why not say it? Mm-hmm. So That's... I just, I'm hoping, so it's it's a reminder for me, because every time I look at it, I go, are you? Are you purveying awesomeness or are you whining? Mm-hmm. He, mm-hmm. Now, now that's, mm-hmm. well, that, and that's uh-huh. the thing, but that's how you, that's how you have to roll. Um, you do, you I, do. I mean, show, you know, either do it or don't show up or go home nice. or whatever. If, if you were to go into the Pruitt home right now, uh, there are a couple signs on the stairs. So as we leave the bedroom and go downstairs to go out the house, there, there are four different signs on there. And there are a lot of different motivational things, such as, you know, what am I going to do to create and dominate? Mm -hmm. And I hit my signs as I go out the door Uh. every day. And and it's just that mental checkup Mm -hmm. that you have with yourself. You know, the the reminder. Yeah, the mental checkup to keep yourself accountable, because if you're going to talk to walk, damn it, you better walk to walk, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. I I totally get it. And I mean, last year, last year, oh, I interrupted you. No, you're good. Go ahead. Last year at this time, we had just moved and completely changed our lives in, mm. in, a, in a way that is like, you know, on paper it looks great, but in reality, it really shakes you up, like to your boot, boot laces. <laughs> and um, I, you know, I'm, I'm all about change, but I like my base and I just wasn't feeling very, I was like, what the hell did we just do? Oh, yeah, that <laughs> moment of pause. <laughs> well, it was several moments and it wasn't uh. awesome. I was not purveying my own right. best awesomeness and I was kind of descending into this, you know, thinking this way of being and thinking I started listening to the things I was saying and I'm like oh my god seriously really are we gonna do that because you know I kind of left all that behind and I went I just was like really not in a good headspace and I thought all right the only person that can shift this is you how do you want to do it do we need to get back into therapy like I'm having this conversation with myself Mm -hmm. and I'm like I am not freaking going back to therapy because I spent enough years in that doing personal work and I don't want to hear what anybody else has to say because I already Mm -hmm. know it Mm -hmm. and like so use your tools so what so for me what came up was I just can't start another process I was Mm -hmm. just beat up and I was tired and I was like all right what's one thing what is the one thing the one stop shop you can focus on every day that will change everything. Mm. And you know what it was? What's that? Awe. Uh, A-W-E. A-W-E. Hmm. I thought if every day I wake up and I'm not talking about, oh, I'll be in a state of, you know, like some kind of holy monk on a hill. I'm just saying, ah, hello, ah, mm. where are you? Because I wasn't feeling awesome at all. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find anything that I, you know, from here I look back and I go, wow, that was amazing what you did. But at the time I was like, I hate everything, Mm. really seriously. And people aren't used to hearing me say that, but I did because I'm human and it happens to me too. And I had a lot of depression and stuff when I was younger. So I was like, no, 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 we're not going down that road. Mm. What, how do we focus on awe every day? I'm like, I'm not even really sure from where this, from where I am right now, I'm not sure. But every day I was like, all right, we're gonna focus on awe. And do you know what else? I knew. When I started that process, the first thing that was going to, the first roll through was going to be all the crap. Mm. So I was like, brace yourself because by focusing on awe, everything that's going on that is not that has to kind of wash surface, Mm -hmm. be chosen about, you know what I mean? It always pops up. Because, (laughs) yeah, because I mean, if it wasn't there, you'd already be focusing on awe, Mm -hmm. right? But I'm not there. And so I'm going to focus on awe to right the train, the train derailed. And so I focused on it and I got to kind of go through all the boxcars and all their contents that were spread all over the ground and go, wow, this really sucks. And I'm like, yeah, what do you want to do with it? What do you want to do with it? What do you want to do with it? Until it finally, it took a while, had to kind of walk through the garbage and then everything started to become more awesome and everything shifted. It became a very different year and I'm really glad I did it, but I had to focus on it every day. It's a discipline. Mm -hmm. How did that affect your work? I mean, what... Well, you know, when I was first, in the the beginning, I wasn't doing any work. Mm. I just couldn't. I had nothing to say. Mm -hmm. I had nothing. I was like, screw work. Mm. I suck. I'm not even an artist. I I mean, seriously, these are the kinds. I mean, so anybody who thinks, oh, Karen's always, you know, just Mm -hmm. sunshine and unicorns. I'm like, "Mm, no, I learned these tools because I had severe depression and I was suicidal at one Mm -hmm. point in my life. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So you have a choice. And I didn't have help. And we didn't, you know, those things were like, oh, what's wrong with you back in the day? Nowadays, it's like, oh, honey, are you okay? How do you feel? Right. Back then, it was like, you know, suck it up, sunshine. Right. So I, I didn't want that life. I wanted something very different. So I had to find new tools. So my work um, at the time wasn't much. I had just enough work that I had to go out and create that I did it the best way I could. I don't know. Mm -hmm. how it all but as a result now what i'm doing is where i see the results you know these these months later i'm going in new directions i'm going to go a direction that i've been too terrified to go in in my in my work at large in the specific work i'm doing some different things that i love that i always held back from because i thought well it's not popular nobody's gonna like it whatever wow. you say to yourself and what now i'm like sound familiar <laughs> Right. That's why I like to say it when when the opportunity strikes, because I don't know anybody who doesn't run into this. And then what do you do? Nobody likes to talk about it. And everybody likes to look at everybody else and say, well, they've got their stuff together and they're a better artist and they're always awesome. And I'm like, um, yeah, actually not. No, <laughs> it's a choice. It's something I want because I know that the nature of awe is to transform. Awe you know, I, is transformational on every level at its core. You know, I find which is why. You know, I, I find awesome it. is your cloud series. My what? Cloud series, a uh, series on clouds. Isn't that crazy? I have probably have like thirty five hundred cloud images. I mean, just they all painterly. make great. They all make great brushes in Photoshop. I don't even know how to do that. Yeah. I have a friend. I have a friend who does, and I go here, make a brush of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think. Yeah, but, but they do. I think what's interesting about the cloud series is that we tend, as photographers, maybe I, I'm talking about myself actually is that uh, there's a time when you just look forward or down, never. Right, and, right. Uh, and I just started, not just started, but I've been really interested about looking up. And mm -hmm. especially if you're kind of stuck, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're in front of, like you're, if you're in a valley, let's say, why not just look up and see what's up there as well? And um, Well, I mean, and you know that it, it applies to, it's a philosophy, looking up. Mm -hmm. And then also, I mean, when I'm out in nature, I feel like I'm standing in the middle of the brushstroke of creation. Yeah. I mean, literally, that's what it feels like. I feel like I'm in a, you know, nature just came and, you know, created this incredible tapestry. Right. And so what did she do up there? Oh, my God. And, right. you know, so when right. you have clouds and amazing things, it's fascinating because mm -hmm. there's a whole world up there. That you got to look up to see, right? And I think it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I agree. Now, you you said previously, um, before the break, your sister was an artist. Uh, mm -hmm. was, was your whole family artistic, like like you and your sister, or is it just you two? Just well, I didn't think I was artistic at all. She was so good, I didn't even try because you know right. she'd draw a horse and it was like oh, three dimensional mm -hmm. and fully formed, and I mine would be a stick figure. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, my mother could sing and dance and play piano, and and my dad could just he never considered himself an artist, and yet he he was a white collar guy by for money, you know, like that. Like he was the supporter of the family and had a corporate job and the whole nine yards. Uh -huh. Then he'd come home on the weekend and fix the car and, you know, build this, build that. Oh, I need that. I need a tool that does this. And then he would make that tool, oh, you know, man. fabricate his whatever awesome. he needed. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was so, I guess it wasn't labeled artistic, but mm. everybody in my family did something pretty cool. Nice. Now, I, there was one more thing. You, you, you spoke about awe and awesome. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. want, I wanted to ask you about the woo because mm. she also does a, a podcast each week on photography radio, and the series is called The Woo. Nice. And when you listen right. to it, it it's, it's, it's awe-inspiring because of, of the, the workflow that she discusses and the mindset that she discusses. Mm. But... If you don't mind, could you define the woo and what the woo means to you? So what the woo means to me, first of all, that there is a directive I was asked by Tomash, who runs the podcast. Mine is a show on the podcast mm -hmm. called Photography Radio. You can find it at photographyradio.com. It's French, and right? Oh, pardon me? It's French, right? So Tomash lives in Zurich. Zurich. Um, and yeah, we're kind of from all over the place. Um but he he started the whole Fuji Love Fuji Love magazine, mm. Fuji Love Live, Fuji Love this and that. This photography radio is his own 
passion project where he wants to talk about everything. And he specifically wanted, he had heard that I did something like this on my blog where I just took a blog post and recorded it. Mm -hmm. Like, and my own personal rule was, okay, just keep it short, eight to 10 minutes. Let's just do that and see what happens. Is that fun? Do I like that? Is that <laughs> awesome or not? Mm -hmm. And so he heard those and he goes, I want something like that where it's short. And it's it's the the hinge point where photography, inspiration, and uh, photography, inspiration, oh my God, I'm going blank on the third word. <laughs> anyway, it's that blend. So mm -hmm. a little bit, it's photocentric and life. That's, I'm sorry, the other part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Duh. Um, <laughs> photography, inspiration, and life come together. So I kind of move it different directions. Uh, like this week happened to be about black and white. So, um, but other times it's about how you think and doing the work or whatever it is. So I try to keep it to, you know, short 10 minutes ish and basically riff on, um, Topics. So the woo, you know, then he says, now we need a name. And I'm like, oh my God, what do I call? I'm horrible at titles and names and descriptions. Me too. <laughs> yeah. But I came up with the woo because, so one of my pet peeves is I'm actually a decent photographer. I'm not saying I'm the best one out there. I'm pretty darn technical, but I mm. hate talking about it. Right. So I think what should determine what you do with your camera or whatever should be your own inspiration and what you want to create. Mm -hmm. And so I refuse to talk about how to move a slider because as soon as I start talking about it, that's all anybody wants to talk about. Well, then should I use, what slider should I use? And I'm like, I'm asleep. I don't know. Don't wake me. Um, <laughs> I don't want to talk about that because you'll figure that out. There's a lot of videos. Go do that. So I only want to talk about why you want to do that because mm -hmm. that's way more definitive than what I say you should do. Right. right? Are we with me yep. on this one? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. So I only talk <laughs> I feel about I am being taught today. <laughs> I know. I, well, I can't help it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know it's good. Taught everything I've ever done for nice. almost 50 years. So anyway, so um, basically I decided to develop a body of work around teaching this thing because nobody was doing it very well. And it was, you know, started with finding your artistic voice and, mm. you know, how to think. And I had to develop the language, the thought process, the, the actual system for it so that I could explain the unexplainable and lead people into a space where they could become art artists, basically, and more of who they are and create the work that makes their, you know, heart happy and sets their soul on fire in the best possible ways. Mm -hmm. So what out of all that and and I create the work I create, which is decent. I mean, I'm not the best photographer out there, but I'm not too bad. And so what's the best possible thing aside from being on photo walks and having some guy reach over and go, Oh, here, let me fix your settings for you, oh. which I've had happen. Oh. Um, which oh. is super fun. Oh yeah. Love that stuff. <laughs> so then you have the, all that. And then coupled with you do all this work, you do something and now people are copying it. They've, I've had purveyor of awesomeness copied by a company recently. Oh, they haven't acknowledged it, but yeah. So, the, so people think enough of it to copy it almost word for word sometimes. Mm. Doing what's right. the best thing what's the best thing they can come up with wow she's a great gal a little woo woo what a great gal hmm. good photographer and i'm like a little woo woo, a little woo, -woo. <laughs> really really okay i'm holding up my hand pick a finger any finger all right so I, got, I got a little feisty about that and then i thought why are you feisty you know what you're doing the thing they can't hmm. all right so, and so when Tomash said, you need a name for the thing, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to lean into this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not using bad language, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mm -hmm. lean into this thing and just call it the woo. Yeah. Yes. You want woo woo? Yes. You think I'm woo woo? I'm oh, you ain't think that you. yet. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and then, then it's kind of fun because then you go, you know, get your woo on. You know, think of all these phrases mm -hmm. that, that, that woo inspires that you could use, and it's sort of fun. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's the story of the woo. I nice. absolutely love it. I, I, I started listening to it um, several weeks back, and it's, it's an absolute <laughs> joy to listen to your thought process and to listen to your encouragement as far as, like, you talk about cross-training and, and mm -hmm. picking up other things other than, you know, what's it like to shoot street only? What's it like to shoot portraits only? And then this week black and white and how unforgiving black and white can be to you. And it's going to force you to be a better photographer and, and get that story. I, I, I love, I love that session this week. Um, Good. I'm glad I don't hear too much feedback, which is kind of interesting. I just throw it out there and I figure, you know, if it's notable, well, I don't know how I would know because I never hear anything, but I just throw it out there because they're all pieces of my background, how I ended up doing what I do. Not that it's the best, but that's what I was asked to do. So I'm doing it. 
the best way I know how. And if it's useful, then that makes me so happy. So I'm really, really glad to hear that, Aunt. Thank you. Now, with regards to to passing on your knowledge, I know you have your retreats where you all are all over the world, and and how how do how do you go about that? Because you're going to get different types of people in your in your sessions. You're going to have someone that's going to be super technical. You're going to have someone that has no clue, but they just want to go for the ride, if you will, and sort of free themselves. And those type, those two different people, you can't speak to them the same way, in my opinion, because they hear things differently and they're going to learn things differently. You know, what what has that experience for you been like as far as sort of reining people in and having them figure out a way to extract that creative voice that they have on the inside? Well, I mean, the one thing I do is I interview everyone who goes on a retreat. Mm -hmm. And this year I'm going to be um, gearing retreats for other groups. Like I'm not going to put on my own this year, Mm -hmm. just this year. I'm going to, because I've got a lot creating for different, for the leadership world and health and wellness and some other, you know, events that want this material. So that's enough for me right now. But basically when I do my own, I interview everyone who comes on. So they understand the focus, which is really about the creative process. So it, the, the theme may be seeing photographically. It may be the power of awe. It may be, um, you know, finding your artistic voice. And then I explain what we're going to do. So they understand, number one, that it's not that kind of workshop. It's this kind of retreat. And then the other things, you know, that happen on the event, which are fantastic. Oh, my God, these, <laughs> these experiences are so, I mean, I want to make out with myself at the end. And, and part of that is my partner in it who knows how to develop the flow. She knows what I want to teach. And then she develops the experiences so it maximizes the whole thing. It's incredible. Anyway, um, so, yeah, so I make sure everybody understands the expectation. If they're such a beginner, then I say, well, then use your phone. Everybody knows how to use their phone. I don't want that to be a distraction. I want to focus on these things which have to do with creativity and seeing and finding your, you know, your inner self and your voice and all that kind of thing. Mm. Um, And we're not going to be focusing on how to run your camera. So bring whatever works for you that isn't a distraction because I ain't going to be sitting there explaining it. Usually I have somebody who can help if they get stuck. Mm. So it's not a big problem. So because I do that, I've had professional photographers and I've had beginner photographers and it's all the same. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That is the point where it all meets. Um, before we get out of here, I wanted to make a point and pick your brain because uh, when I look at a Karen Hutton image, there's always a, a certain aesthetic that I recognize. First and foremost, a strong, strong leading line. I don't care what it is but it is a strong lead in line in our images. And then there's the mystical feel, mystical, um, I guess it's awe. Because when you look at it, it's, it's the, the colors are, are vibrant, but yet it's soft at the same time. It's mm-hmm. not, not harsh, smacking you in the face. Um, and then again, you have that lead in line in whatever the image is. It's always a lead, <laughs> a lead in line. Is, is that just... Something that you found that just just speaks to you every time that you're out, you just sort of draw into that or or. Well, I'll tell you, um, because I shoot a lot of different like big epic landscapes, intimate landscapes, you know, travel and animals and everything. And they're all defined the same way. I know what I love to see, what I need to see and what, you know, fills me with that feeling. So. I have to go from where I am. I was a figure skater. I was a dancer. I was an actor. I was a singer. So, it, you know, I have music and line and things mm. in me. I can't just leave who I am at home and go and do something else because what would that be anyway? So people say I see leading lines and I'm like, huh, okay, well, that's good. What's going on in my mind is movement mm-hmm. and focus and specificity. And they're like on the woo, I'm, I'm pulling out a lot of these threads and having conversations about them so that hopefully people are learning some ways of thinking about these things that aren't, oh, I should always have a leading line mm-hmm. because that's like, it, as an actor, that's like saying your lines by rote. Uh, you, gotcha. you don't really show up and you're not really present. Gotcha. So the fact that there are leading lines, I don't think about it that way. I think about the story and I think about movement and I think about how it it feels inside of me as it comes out into the world. And the mystical thing is just, that's just how I see. Mm-hmm. 
It's yeah, just and, the and, and of the course lens. There's nothing wrong with that. And I left out one more element: light. You right. play around oh with light a lot. Mm-hmm. And, and well, I had a vision, you know, when I was young that defined my entire life, mm-hmm. and it was all about light. So I can't. That's a that's a theme and a way of being. And I always wondered if it would actually translate into my work, and apparently it does. And you can never really be the judge of that. I mean, all you can do is show up. You know, leave leave it all on the stage. Take nothing with you, and hope that it comes across. That's the thing about being an artist is you don't have control over the perception. But the vision I had as when I was young was that very quickly and simply was that I was standing on a stage. Uh, my it was like this um, standing on a big stage, beautiful old theater. My arms were outstretched, my mouth was open, and this huge column of light was coming down from the heavens, coming Mm -hmm. down through the top of my head, through my body, out my hands, my gut, my mouth, washing out onto this audience and transforming them. Mm. And I was like maybe eight when I had that. Yeah. And I thought, wow, because I was innocent enough at the time to go, wow, that's cool. Uh, oh, this is, I'm so glad I came to this planet. <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> Boy, was that ever different. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> and there were other times like, why did I come to this hellhole? But, oh. you know, <laughs> thank God I found my, you know, so consequently I was always through everything I did, even though I had this wide variety of things that I've done in my life, they were all seeking how do I move light? How do I be a stand for light? How do I be that pillar of light that I saw and felt and experienced? And I know it's real because I felt it. Mm. You know, and people talk about, well, do you believe in God? I'm like, how do you believe in something that just is mm-hmm. and is part of you and that spoke and that's like the, the, there's no veils? Right. So there's- I don't I don't know how to answer that question either. All I know how to do is show up and do the best I can to bring that to everything I do. And think about cameras. What mm-hmm. is our medium? Mm-hmm. It's light and time. Mm-hmm. There's so, a new- I'm sorry, there's an image that you have that is a black and white as a plant and it's kind of the light is moving. Um, it's like, I don't know what you call it. It's a, a, like a thistle. I don't know what oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Really beautiful. I mean, just that, that feels like there's light flowing through. There's very detailed. Right. And that's, you know, part of the message there, too, is that people say, like, I spoke yesterday to a group um, mm-hmm. who's creative, and I, I was talking about this whole thing with awe and bringing it every day. And some people think, oh, you need to go to a mountaintop. You need to go, you know, nature does help. Being in nature helps. Being on a mountaintop helps. It's great. I mean, I love it. I want to do that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I look around and I see how light bounces off the soul of my thermos, of that penumbra, you know, that place right. where the light and the shadow blends for a minute before it's one or the other. And it right. and look at the detail that's in there. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Focus on the things that are, oh, that's just beautiful. And it's not the thermos, it's the light you mentioned and how the light the interacts with it. You mentioned that on the woo. I remember that. Pen, pen, yeah. Penumbra. 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 I know. I love that word. <laughs> Such a cool it's, term. It's like pithy. I also love pithy. Oh, nice. <laughs> they're such good. They're P words, but I like other words too. But I totally those... agree about getting out and, and getting air. Um, mm-hmm. you, know, you, you talked about um, battling with depression, and, and we have been here on Twit TV, and we've been very open about the battles and the seriousness of mental health, and, and we try to you know raise awareness about it and, and let people know that. There's no stigma around it. It shouldn't be a stigma around uh-uh. it. But this is how you can help take care of yourself by first recognizing it and then just doing the simple things of at least trying to speak to people or or just getting out, getting some air and seeing nature. And nature is so in that healing. positive energy, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. You know, there's a forest, um, forest bathing. Have you heard that term? I have not. Uh-uh. Okay. So forest bathing is there's a number of books about forest bathing. Um, there is a um, an author, he's Japanese, he kind of wrote the book on it that everybody else um, sort of started. I'm doing a really quick search uh, because I want to give his name, even though I probably can't pronounce it. <laughs> um, but on Amazon, oh, well, I'm not, I'm failing. But anyway, he's Japanese mm. and kind of wrote the defining book on forest bathing. Mm. And it's, you know, he just, it's so simple. It's so beautiful. Oh, Dr. King Lee, Q, Q-I-N-G, Lee, L-I, doctor. He wrote, in quote, the book, although there are others, and now there are practices around it. And it's so simple and it's so beautiful. And he makes it so clear about a way, not the only way, but a way to be out in the trees and in nature 
and just let it heal you. A way. Not a, way. a way. A way. Yeah. I mean, there's not just one way, but nature, seriously, <laughs> you know, nature has, has its way. You mm. get out there and, um, you know, when I was healing from some of my well, I did have a breakdown at one point, and I was working with an incredible um, counselor, and he had me go out in nature. And I remember, and it's, you know, I probably shouldn't tell the story of lying out in the snow till it covered me because it's probably dangerous in the Sierra Nevada mountains. But, hey, it worked. <laughs> and, um, and you know, to hear the other voices besides the crazy ones in your head, and I don't mean crazy in a disrespectful way, but, oh, I get it. you know, yeah, I mean – a lot of times people say, well, you think too much. And I get really mad because I'm like, well, then that just tells me you don't think enough. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so there, bam, don't tell me that because yes, sometimes the voices in my head when it's critical, when they're being critical, when they're tearing me down and they're denigrating me, that's not good. And I don't like that, but it's my mind. And I have a choice about how I'm going to focus my thoughts because thoughts do create our reality. And if you want to know how your reality, if it's not the way you like it, how is that happening? Observe your thoughts for a couple of days. See what you're saying to yourself and see what you're saying after you say, I am, because mm -hmm. I am is an empowering thought. So whatever you say after I am, you know, beautiful, I am talented, I'm an artist or whatever, or I suck or I'm, you know, horrible. It's you are empowering the word that you say after I am. So be diligent. And especially this time of year, it's not easy. It's not easy for me. It's not easy for a lot of people. Right. This um, is a heavy so what you, time for a lot of people. It's a heavy time because a lot of expectations roll out and a lot of disappointments. And it's a time of year where you're looking back and looking forward at the same time and you're tired. And, um, you know, be kind. Be mm -hmm. kind to yourself and don't judge yourself just because you're not thinking perfect thoughts. But observing them and, and understanding what's going on and if they're not if you listen to yourself, talk to yourself, and the reality they're speaking of, those thoughts, is not a reality you really want to live, then you need to start there. How do you think better thoughts? Will you go, hmm. start looking around and going, what, look, noticing what you love. Go out in nature. Oh, I love that tree. Oh, uh, people tease me because, you, oh, you say you love everything. And I'm like, I know the power of language. I know the power of words and thoughts. So I love the penumbra on my little thermos, which I have right here mm -hmm. sitting in the sun. And I know we're not on video, but you know, mm -hmm. you saw it, people mm -hmm. in audio land. Oh, we know. Yeah. And the and live so, stream people are watching it. So they got, yeah, there you go. So, <laughs> so basically I love moments when I shut up and give myself a break. I love when I do something creative. I love going out in nature, you know, do things you say I love more often. Cut yourself a break. It's active. It's not enough to just kind of like, I have to think better thoughts, you know, love stuff more. Take action on the stuff that you love because when you take action, you're running that, that creative arc from an idea you have inside, moving it out into the world, taking action, moving it forward. Then you get to have a result. That's the only way things change is you have a result. Then you get to decide, ooh, do I like that? Do I not like that? I think I'm going to tweak it a little this way. You don't judge it because mm -hmm. if you judge it, it's going to stop. Now right. you got to start all over again and that sucks. So you go, oh, I want to I want to tweak it a little this way, a little that way. Bring it back inside and go, ooh, and I love how this feels. Okay, let's try that one. So you run this creative arc in a circular fashion inside, outside, inner world meet outer creation, outer action, rinse and repeat. That's how things shift a thought at a time, a moment at a time, an action at a time. And that's how you learn how to create your life as an art. And from that, the art that you create has a whole different meaning. Amen. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Yeah, we soaked, <laughs> we soaked that up pretty well. It's a it's a time of year to remember that. Mm. You know, I talk about it all year long when in my in my talks to different groups and so on and so forth. Then I talk about creativity and creating art. People go, well, "What is art?" And art is original thought, original like, oh, there's nothing new under the sun. Well, maybe, but. You can have your own thoughts, not the ones that somebody else gave you, not the ones from the media, not the ones from television, not the ones from so-and-so's YouTube video that says this is the way to use this slider or whatever. What do you want? What do you desire? What do you feel? What, what 
puts you in a state of awe mm. and go there. Mm. I think that's a beautiful message for this, uh, <laughs> this uh, upcoming week. Miss Karen, day. holy... And it is holy. holy. Crap. It is it, <laughs> holy crap. It is a holy thing. But you know what? We were created from that spark of divine fire. I don't know how else to say it. But you know, I've been there. I've seen it. I know how it all works. And that's it. That's who we are. Mm. Anything less? Eh? Why bother? Man, there you go. Wolves. Um, mm, yeah, wolves. I'm gonna have to have you close the show uh, out. I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you affected this guy here. Well, he's a big heart. He's yeah. a big soul, and uh, uh, mm, you know, goodness. we're talking. We're talking the same language Speaking here. Speaking my language. Speaking my language. Nice. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, folks. Um, <laughs> thank you, brother. I need that. That's sweet. See, Aunt, that's what makes you who you are. That's what makes you so good at what you do, and that's what makes this job you're doing and putting a voice to it with that gorgeous voice of yours that's it's important <laughs> we all need to show up and do that thing that sets our soul on fire in that divine fire kind of way that's what this world needs right now and that's why with my work that's what i try to do i mean whether it's leading lines or light or whatever you can pick it apart and call it whatever you want but mm-hmm. that's what i'm trying to do and i have a vision of it being somewhere In the world, maybe I'm thinking, I don't know if I'm thinking of a real gallery or a real thing, but that it's in the world and people walk into the presence of it and are transformed just like my vision. Mm. What's it like to be in the presence of your work? What's it like to be in the presence of your voice? If you really show up, it's a vibration that changes everything. And how open you could be. Well, you don't have to open to everything. You know, you want to be discerning. Mm. Discerning and wisdom is huge. Right. People say, oh, you just have to be open. Well, look at some of the energies on the planet right now. I don't want to be open to some of that. I want to divert. Right. <laughs> right. Divert. Exactly. <laughs> you know, right. An awful lot of it. Right. But I do want to be open to my highest light. I do mm. want to be open to the, um, to the to true inspiration, to, to, you know, what's real and, you know, that lines up with that light that I knew as a child. Miss mm-hmm. Karen. Um, yes, aunt. Thank you for this. You are so <laughs> I have no graceful segue or just mm, thank you. This, this was whew, needed and moving. And I hope the folks listening to this week's focus on photography can it just get an ounce of what I felt mm-hmm. uh, with your message and what you've shared from, oh, because it, it goes beyond photography, folks. Yeah, it does. It is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, photography is an instrument. Photography is not an end. It's a way mm-hmm. to weave light and weave voice and weave what it is you feel and want to say and express. It's a, it's a vehicle. It's a beautiful vehicle. And it's fun to have cool cameras. I'm I'm the first one to admit it. I'm a Fujifilm X <laughs> photographer. I freaking love my gear. Yeah. But it's not my God. It's right. not, you know, it's not going to mm. drive me. It, it isn't what I answer to. Mm. So yeah. I think at this time of the year, any time of the year, but I think this time of the year, it's a good time to, to reflect on, you know, what do you really want to create? Who do you want to be? How do you want to feel? I mean, in my worst, darkest days, and they're, you know, I was suicidal at 17. Mm. I was like, "Who? what do you want to feel? Like, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to have. I don't know anything. I just know I want to feel better. Mm. And I started with that. I just want to feel good. Mm-hmm. And I really honestly wanted that. And I didn't say I want to feel good, but I can't because blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, it's like I have, I have to control what I'm listening to. I want to feel good. Please show me how to feel good. Who you know? I'm not saying you have to believe in God, but you can ask. You can put it out there to good powers that be, mm-hmm. and say, "I want to feel good again. I want to feel good for the first time. I want to feel good in a way I've never dreamt of feeling good. Right. I want to make a difference. Make it happen. You know, mm-hmm. make, make it, it happen. happen. And mm-hmm. in so many ways, simply by asking and inviting, you kind of get yourself out of the way and let awe step in and start to have a voice 
And you may suddenly be awestruck by the way the light comes through your Venetian blinds and hits your stupid old beat up ottoman. You may go, <laughs> oh, you know, I'm not saying you have to go to a mountaintop. Nature will help. Nature will always help. If you can get out and do that, do that. But I've spoken to many people who are housebound, wheelchair bound, bed bound, who right. can't. Right. You know, but they do have control over their thoughts, mm. what they look at and how they frame. So we can all do that. We can do that for each other. Yes. That's why I'm here. That's why I wanted to do this with you. Yeah. So thank you for no. for <laughs> allowing me to share this and no, you know. thank you. You, you yes. Miss Karen. Thank you. You're welcome. This, this You're welcome. Is... I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday and new year and that if they listen to this in mm -hmm. August, you know, of a different <laughs> year, that it, you know, re-inspires them and um, enlivens something amazing inside because mm -hmm. we all want to see it. We all need that gift that yep. only you can give. Yep. So Ooh. that's what I believe. This well, is This has been a... Hell of a way to end focus on photography for today and for 2019. This mm. is our last episode of the year, Wolves. Yeah. Well, and, um, ooh, every time I finish this show, I get all fired up. But now I'm fired up and I'm sweating and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm yep. snotting all over the place and tears <laughs> and <laughs> that gum at Miss Hutton. Jeez. <laughs> You're welcome. You are so welcome. I, I know, you know, people think creativity is passive. I get all hot and sweaty when I create or when that when that energy comes through. Ugh. It just it just yeah. clears it. Yeah. Goodness, goodness. I this love is, it. It's one of those shows that I know I'm gonna be listening to over and over, over and over and over again. Just yeah. to kind of because every time you yeah. hear it, you, there'll be another new message. You know, you're not gonna get everything at one time. Right. But right. it's just gonna be one of those things that uh, when you read a good book. Oh, so you kind of come back to it. You go. I back. may have to go back and listen to it to see what I said because you know. Ah. Like, you do things, I'm like, you're gonna bring yourself to tears. That'll be totally <laughs> fine by so us. Cool. Totally yeah. fine by us. Now, <laughs> Miss Karen, we can find you on online. I know we can go to your yes. website, KarenHutton.com. Yes. Um, Karen, KarenHutton.com, KarenHutton.art. Oh. And uh, those are, those are kind of like two aspects of my world. KarenHutton.com will take you everywhere. Mm -hmm. KarenHutton.art is a little more fine art focused. Mm. When are we going to get more Instagram stories again with you walking around with the wild horses? Oh, stuff? my oh. God. Oh, the wild horses are all <laughs> in the neighborhood right now. It's like, are they wild or not? But they are. <laughs> um, you know, I, I need to do that. I go in and out. I have this love-hate thing with social media. And sometimes, like right now, I'm in a process. I'm in my own life. I'm, I'm kind of like I go through this thing where I go inside. And mm. it's just not broadcastable. I don't, right. I don't necessarily want to share my whole I feel you everything. That. Yeah. It's a little bit too much mm -hmm. of a show mentality out there. So sometimes yeah. I kind of disappear and I know that in quote, that's not the right way to run a business, but I have to fill up too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I get you. That's what I'm doing right now. And then, you know, I'll come back with something. Sweet. Well, thank you again, Miss Karen. Um, again, You're we'll, we'll link everything in the show notes as far as how to find her work and everything that she's got going on and, and things that she can offer up to you as a creative artist or just as a human being. Dad gummit. Dad gummit. Mr. Wolves, how do our listeners get in touch with you and see what you got going on? Um, you could go to at Hey Wolves, H-E-Y-W-O-O-L-S for the Instagram, or you could go to michaelbwolsey.com and uh, kind of see what I'm doing lately. Beautiful website you have, my man. Thank you. My website is crap right now. Ah. I'm going to redo it, but that's, that's a project for next week. Actually, I, I do have that on my list. I've already started redoing it. So. Yeah, I think, though, when you're recreating your, um, your website, I think we all should listen to this uh, podcast mm -hmm. and kind of find fuel our, um, that energy for right our, there. find our awe <laughs> in our own work in your own work in your own way yep. that's right that's right yep and you can find me here uh at twitch studios each and every week um, i'm on the twitterverse i'm on instagram as ant underscore pruitt um, but if you do me a favor go ahead and follow twit on instagram uh, that's twit.tv and check out what we have going on at the studio. You'll see a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Um, 
I'm pretty sure they're probably going to come running through the door here any minute now to catch all the tears and snot running out of my face. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or the, the perpetual just to, just to kind of call it what it is. Yeah, you know? the, it's, it's, yeah. it's all behind the scenes, and it's a lot of fun. I, so give us a follow over there on uh, twit.tv on Instagram. And folks, be sure to hit share after you listen to this podcast. I know you have already subscribed in your favorite podcatcher of choice. But what helps us out the most is continuing to share it out with other people that may be interested in this awesome content. Um, to everybody that's. Sorry. Don't be sorry. You don't have to ever apologize. apologize. Merry Christmas, Aunt. Yeah. Thank you, everyone that has supported this show and supported this network and supported me this year. It means a lot to me and my family, and uh, I'm going to continue to bring it and give you the best that I have to offer. Uh, and that support is greatly appreciated. 2019 was outstanding. 2020 is going to be even bigger and better. So just stay tuned and uh, stick with this. I'm going to close this show out now. <laughs> Thank well, big you. Love to, uh, big love to everyone. <laughs> big love to you guys. And here's to a massive 2020. Right Thank, you. Right Thank you. Thank we'll you. We'll catch you all. Uh, in January for our first show of the year. We won't be recording anymore for this year, 2019, but check us out the first Thursday in uh, 2020, my man Wolves. And I don't think I have a guest scheduled that time, but it's all good. Our vibes are still great. Nice. So we'll catch y'all next time. Take care, folks. Get out there, create, and dominate. See ya. Bye. See you, Karen. Thank you.